Okay, I think we're recording. So welcome. This is the fifth meeting of the uh, IPFS DAPS working group. Um, Hannah Howard, who's on the uh, Saturn team, has uh, prepared uh, something that she's going to show us about trustless car verification. But before that, I thought that today we would just uh, uh, do a bit of a recap, a stats update, but also just realign um, on what this uh, working group, uh, what the working group's goal is. And so I've uh, shared uh, the URL for the meeting notes. That's on HackMD. I'll also just quickly share my screen. And I've just did a, I've, I've just done a, a summary uh, ahead of uh, today's meeting um, of the problem statement and some of the high level goals. I'm not going to go into all of this, but from a high level, these are the three goals that we have. We want to establish verified retrieval as the norm for retrieving seeds on the web. If you'll sort of dive deeper into this, or if you've been involved with this working group prior, you're probably familiar with some of the inherent challenges of doing that. Um, for top level documents, but I'm not going to get into all of those details just now. Feel free to sort of get uh, read through the problem statement there. Um, we want to decrease the reliance on trusted gateways um, and improve the experience of dApps on IPFS with better tooling, both for developers and users who are using dApps um, that are hosted on IPFS. And uh, that translates into some more concrete uh, goals that we have. Um, there's quite a few members of the IPFS Shipyard team. The Ship team is a team that's uh, currently responsible for maintaining uh, Kubo, Helia, and some of the other repositories that are really powering all of this ecosystem. IPFS Shipyard nucleated out of uh, protocol labs and is now an independent entity. Um, and of course, we have a lot of uh, ecosystem stakeholders. Uh, we have uh, Ed from uh, Liquidity who's been quite active in these sessions. He's not with us today, but um, he's been working on a number of solutions that he pre presented in the earlier meetings. Uh, and of course, you know, we have the East Limo team who are joining today. Um, and so really this is an open space uh, for us to meet and really to advance some of these goals. I should also say that these are the goals that I synthesized based on some of the research that I've done and also through all of these sessions and the meetings that we've had prior. However, it is not set in stone. We are uh, agile and uh, nimble, uh, or at least we aim to be. And uh, I think there's always space for us to um, adjust and um, change based on needs um, or add even. So uh, with that, um, I invite you also, if you have any feedback on that, you can use HackMD to leave comments. I've opened up commenting for anyone. In fact, editing, if you're logged in, is also possible for anyone. So you can just go and edit, but ideally to have uh, conducive discussions. I think it would just be good to just go and um, use the commenting functionality. You can do that by highlighting on view mode and then add your comments um, here. And uh, unless there's any questions, I think this would be a good moment for us. Okay, I see that uh, we have some refinements that um, Lidl is adding. So with that, I think uh, it might be good to give at least a status update on two initiatives that are uh, spearheaded by the IPFS shipyard team. Um, specifically, uh, it's Mr. Aching Brain, also known as Alex, who's uh, doing a lot of the coding work for this. Uh, also Russell, I think he can't join us because of time zone differences. But the first one is this open pull request that we have inside the Helio repo. This is an effort to provide an HTTP only version of Helio. And the idea there is that uh, this is just an interface so that you can work with uh, trustless gateways of your choice um, without any sort of dependency on lead P2P. And uh, another initiative that we have, uh, and so we're hoping really that uh, the first release of this will probably be coming out, I don't know, Alex, in the coming days, hopefully, we will have an initial release. We'll see about it. Yeah. Right. And then the second uh, uh, status update is on um, this project. 
that uh, is currently the repo is called Web3 Fetch, but this is going to actually probably change to something like Helia Fetch. And the idea here is to compose all of the existing Helia uh, packages into something that looks more like um, like the browser API, the Fetch API. And so there's an ongoing discussion here about what the design should look like. We're trying to work through this by actually designing the API for this and then working back uh, the implementation based on that. Um, and so if you have any sort of thoughts on this, um, this is a good place where a lot of the discussion around this is happening. And uh, unless you want to add anything else, Lyle or Alex, um, I would like to then probably hand uh, it over to Hannah, who's going to talk about the trustless car verification. Great. Mm -hmm. yep. Good. Hey, um, so uh, I'm Hannah, I'm the tech lead on the Saturn team. Um, coming to this uh, meeting sort of a, 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 from a team that has already been doing a lot of this kind of, uh, the specific kind of, of work around in-browser verification, particularly for trustless uh, HTTP gateways. Um, uh, our network has from the beginning only supported trustless HTTP gateways. So we had to build software to deal with this uh, one way or another. Um, uh, I don't know, um, in terms of like, you know, in, in, in terms of our engagement with the group, we're really excited to contribute anything that, you know, like we have a bunch of software, we can take bits and pieces and contribute it back or we can not, or we can not like, I, you know, like definitely like our stuff is very much like we built it in the moment need this, need this to do that. And like, you know, like if this group has like really wants to be intentional about design, I totally support that. Um, um, but anyway, I, I kind of wanted to just share like what we know, what we believe we know from having tried to do this from sort of top to big, to bottom. I don't know quite what exists in terms in, I don't know what this group has already built in terms of like ingesting and verifying car, trustless car responses, um, following the whole protocol with four, 410 and 412. And I'm forgetting all of the IP IPs that were involved in expanding that. Um, but I wanted to share what we've what we've we've done. I'm going to share my screen. I don't really have a presentation, but I think it might be helpful to just cover some of the things that I'm aware of. Um, uh, so first of all, um, I believe that last time I was here, I said something about well. So we use a to essentially our tool for verifying is JS IPFX Unix FS that repo. I don't know if that's current repo. I, that was what we were aware of. It has a thing called an exporter in there. Um, the JS, IPFS, UnixFS, Node ex exporter, or I'm not sure what it's called. Anyway, um, what it does is it reads from a block store and then it outputs a flat file, right? Um, and uh, I, in our stuff, um, what we do is for the block store that it reads from, we supply the car file that is incoming from the trustless gateway. Um, does that make sense to everyone? So basically we, we our car, we make it like a block store and then we feed it to the exporter. Um, and then we also, and we actually, we don't feed it like as a very, uh, like a car V2 block store. We literally, as blocks come in and as the exporter asks for the next block, we feed it whatever the next block is from the trustless uh, gateway. Um, so we do a streaming kind of implementation. Um, anyway, what the last time I was here, I was complaining that uh, that that the exporter did not support ranges. I was wrong. Um, uh, I went in and I could see that the exporter, what it supports is like an offset and a length. Um, uh, it's got this exporter op options object. It's a little, you, you kind of have to know how to use it because like it gets called like you first you initialize it you use this function i think it's called walk path or something and then there's another function on the final node you get called node.content and that's where you pass these options but it is something you can do um and then this pr that we wrote in our code is basically like what we ended up doing in here there's just a couple of things that happen um the first thing we're doing here is taking like our concept of a range and converting it to one of these entity bytes uh, parameters, which you know is the thing we have in our API to do a range-like request. Um, the other thing, and then the other thing that we do is we take our range and do this 
increasingly common set of uh, range bound checks uh, that exists, like for example, also in uh, in the uh, um, uh, the Bifrost gateway code in Go uh, to basically be like, oh, is the range less than zero? Then we need to you know adjust it towards the end of the the um, uh, towards the end of the, the object and a bunch of other stuff like this. Um, so yeah, that's us just doing that. That's basically all the code that we added here. Um, and then and then the only other thing that we probably have to figure out eventually for range requests is what to do, because the HTTP, if you're converting a flat request with a range uh, header, um, the HTTP range, uh, HTTP range, um, header supports multiple ranges. I do not believe Entity Bytes does at the current moment, or at least I've never built software that supports that. Um, so like you can technically ask for the HTTP range like zero to 1000 and 2000 to 3000 in the same request with the comma. And we don't currently have that support in our, um, in, in, in our, our uh, for, for our ranges. Uh, the reason I bring all, the only reason I'm kind of pushing on, I'm like bringing all this up is the range, requests quickly become necessary if you want to support video. So that's a, a thing that, you know, um, comes up. Yeah, this is where we did the the service worker work to actually convert the range header parameter. And like for us, like at least for right now, I think somewhere in here to do support multi-range requests. Um, yeah, uh, so anyway, but like, you know, this is just reading the range header and then converting it to something we understand, which is for now, we're just using a start and an end. Um, I do want to go back though and, talk about, so, so it's actually cool because I think we haven't done, run this end to end. We're going to find out soon if it works. Uh, but um, uh, there, it, it looks like we may, there, you know, hopefully range requests will work end to end. The other challenge we have is that we, I, I mentioned at the beginning that what we do is we, um, uh, we do this sort of like re verifying as we stream in the response, which is pretty important if you're reading in a large response in JavaScript, you probably don't have the room to buffer the entire thing into, um, I guess, an in-memory block store, maybe a local storage block store. I don't know what Qlia does. It could work, um, but in any case, we need we want to buffer it. Um, and the one thing that we don't have is, uh, is the JS uh, IPFS UnixFS exporter um, currently is, I think it's parallelized. It's like designed to just, you know, traverse the DAG quickly and produce the output as quickly as quickly as possible. This does not work well for us because we wanted it to traverse it exactly in depth first order. Um, I don't know why. So it's, it's very interesting. We actually have, we have a fork of JS IPFS Unix FS. Oh my God, did somebody update this? Oh no, right. Oh. It, Bonus, it's not in the in in it's not on the right branch. It's on the build branch. Lovely. Uh yeah, actually it's easy. Yes. Yeah, that's here. probably. Yeah. No, no, it's 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 in here. This is the actual branch we use, and that's just the commit that's in the other branch. Anyway, we have this code to convert it to DFS. Um I don't know, like this actually was written a minute ago and it was never submitted as a PR, but we can submit it as a PR if it's useful to people. Um uh because it is like, although the trustless responses are not guaranteed to be in DFS, it is one of the supported orders and it is one of the most useful because, you know, then you can verify things streaming and then just output the output as soon as it's ready um, and not worry about, you know, parallelizing it. Um, so that covers, let me just see if I've covered lack of DFS. We have an employer. For some reason, we submitted this PR that like, Reduces the block read concurrency. Oh, no, no, you guys submitted this. There's this block read concurrency, and we got involved in a discussion because we thought if we reduce the block read concert concurrency, maybe that would work, but I think it's still breath first. So, like, a lot, a lot of things going on there. This other PR, I don't know what it is. Um, anyway, this is our fork, and I, I'll submit it as a PR just, just so that it's available, not required to merge, like, but if people want it. Um, that's most of what I have. Um, we also have, I mean, it may be interesting for you all. We've, we've, you know, we've learned a lot doing some of this stuff like service workers are interesting because you can't, 
they will often not be able to catch all the requests for a first page load, right? Because like in when a, when a, when a page loads, you have to install the surface worker and when the surface worker is done, then you get to use the service worker. Um, but that means that if you've got a bunch of requests that go out for assets that are SIDS um, before your service worker gets in there to stop them uh, and, and use some trustless response, then they're gonna go need to go to probably a trustless, trusted gateway for the first run. Um, so it's a lot of, a lot of fun stuff uh, with service workers. Um, also, they have to be hosted on the domain that you are uh, that they're installed on. So like you won't be able to make like ipfs.io slash serviceworker.js and have people just link to that and install it. They'll need it to come from their own domain. Um, Joy's the web platform. Uh, anyway, that's that's uh, that's most of what I have. So yeah. That's great. I'm sure there's some, at least I have a bunch of questions um, and, and I'll probably get in. I guess the first question I have is, this whole idea of streaming verification, I've, I've heard a lot about this, but I'm not actually quite sure uh, what is the current state, at least just in the pure, uh, like the JS land of IPFS, so the non-Saturn um, part. Do you actually have a working demo where you're doing this with a video and you're doing you know, the range request based on um, the navigation yeah. of the actual video element? No, not yet. We're going to, hopefully in two weeks. Okay. Uh, yeah, like this was like our first go at implementing the like up till now, we believed incorrectly that the 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 library, uh, the Unix FS library didn't support this. And so we were like, oh, we don't want to deal with going deep in the bowels of Unix FS. I didn't realize that someone on the team had already gone deep in the bowels of Unix, of JSC, Unix FS. Um, but um so we are going to, in this upcoming sprint, we're going to be doing an end-to-end -end test to find out if it works. For This is for range requests, right? Um, and streaming range requests. For streaming verification, as in like when we get an asset, like for an image, say, uh, from from uh, one of uh, the nodes, which is serving, or the Saturn nodes, which is serving a trustless HTTP response, we... Um, uh, we are verifying it's streaming. So as soon as we get a, a block in, we verify it's the correct block we expect. And then if it's the, if it's a leaf node and it has data, we're going to output it, that as the next data for that response. Um, and so we don't have a buffer of any kind of blocks that have come in. Um, we, we, we just kind of try to process them in the moment and produce the output. And if anything goes wrong, for, for our case, it's pretty simple because for, if anything goes wrong along the way, we just blow up and say, no, we're not loading this image. So. Right, and then the second question was uh, regarding uh, so um, the trustless gateway spec actually defines the car order parameter, which you can use to define how you want the car file laid out. Yeah. I imagine that these are the L1 or the L2 nodes, uh, the SATA nodes that are actually also implementing this. So obviously, there's yes. another implementation in addition to the Kubo one. Um, did yes. you say that not all of them implemented, or that there were? Or, or that there were any oh, no. problems around so the server side our, implementation? All of our implementation is done on the L1 node. It's actually from Lassie, um, which is the sort of thing that's doing the fetching from the networks and it outputs dev first, dev first. So we have the guarantee that it is always dev first from our nodes. Um, but uh, well, actually, yeah, that's true. Even if, even if um, the, the, even if we talk eventually to other trustless gateways, by the time it comes out of Lassie, it's in debt first order. Um, and so um, we, you know, for us, it's not a problem, but like my understanding is that the spec in the general sense does not say everything. Like there's an order parameter, but it's optional. And if the server does not have to respond or support it. So you, um, so then it becomes, so like, I guess it would mean that like whatever you're using to verify the content has to support all the potential orders that are coming in from a server, if the server is arbitrary. For our case, we can somewhat limit it based off of what we know. Um, and also the fact that we know we control both the client and to a lesser extent, the server. So, um, Thank but Depert is probably the only one that I think is, well, it's probably both depth first and breadth first or could probably work for you know streaming verification of a Unix FS file. It's depth versus better, but you know the the intermediate nodes are small anyway, so who cares? Yeah. 
Other questions? I guess maybe it would be good to align on the state of the things. So there's uh, there's this PR from uh, there's the PR in sort of the in the fork of the Saturn client or in the fork of the fork of JSW the Phoenix FS. There's the block read concurrency thing. I yeah. think there were already public settings to do this. I, I remember we, we sort of ran through because this is like the same story we did in, in with Bifrost Gateway and then we were porting it over here and it didn't quite do yeah. all the things, but but they can. I, I think I recall there was maybe an, an edge case around if you tried to export like an entire directory where you mm -hmm. might run where where things weren't quite going in like a in a DFS order. Uh mm -hmm. there were but that's unlikely to be relevant for, for yeah, Saturn. No, no, that's, that's unlikely to be relevant for Saturn. It's probably not relevant for for most of, you know, yeah. if you're just trying to like load things, like doing like fetch API things, it's unlo unlikely to be an issue unless you're trying to do the the tar export. Um, it, so I guess I'm wondering like- Who's yeah. the like original or- Primary maintainer, knowledge keeper about JS Unix FS IPFS. Is that you, Alex? Or like, or is it one of those repos where like it's been worked on and so many people that no one know quite knows the state of it? David Diaz. Oh. David Diaz, great. No, it's Hydro. I blame Hydro. And and what and and then like like I know like Web3 Storage uses Dagula, which is a different live yeah, which under the hood uses js ipfs exporter as well all, all these things are nobody is today rewriting. today we are yeah all right we are literally rewriting you're rewriting views yeah so i'm just right. like trying to so so my and, and also like when i say oh it doesn't do depth first because my per one of my dads wrote a pr that changes things I don't know what the, like, I mean, all I know is he wrote that because he couldn't do something. Like, that's the one that you can, either I do generally know about the Saturn team is they write things when they get blocked. Um, and so uh, I suspect there is something that there was a reason for that, but I don't know, like, the concrete, like, why is there. Um, the, the, uh, challenge, the challenge we've had using, trying to merge the requirements of the trustless gateway traversal spec with the JS Unix fix exporter library as it stands today is the library is focused on uh, entities and gives you callback functions to go and fetch a set of blocks. Whereas you kind of, for our purposes, we just need to be emitting each block as it's traversed. Um, it's, it's not. It's just a kind of mismatch between. Hey, 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 hey. No, 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 no. You're not gonna start making noise in my office with that. <laughs> yeah, no making noise. No making noise. Um, sorry, I'm not muted. That's all right. No worries. Um, it, there's no specific problem with the Unix FS exporter libraries. It's just that we're finding the mismatch between the API service area we need and the one that presents is not working for us. Um, so we're going to be building a block-centric traversal library as a starting point, extracting that from Dagula and making that standalone so that you can bring your own block store. But the traversal is quite, traversal is getting more complicated with the trustless gateway stuff. So <clears throat> having that standalone and block-centric is going to be useful for a freeway library that does the HTTP version or Dagula library that's the standalone bits for client. And it sounds like for Saturn too. Yeah, I mean, I, for for us, like we're just trying to get the we're gonna like there's gonna come we're gonna get to the point where we have this working for our needs, and then the question will be what could we contribute back to, or what actual problems exist? Should it be an XFS exporter? Certainly, one thought that I one thought that I have had looking at all this code is I'm like, is there like we're running a Front end client that we would like to deliver to the browser. And this is the only thing we need, right? And so we would, you know, there may come a point where we want to use the absolute minimum JavaScript code required to do this traversal, um, you know, just to reduce the KB size. Um, but uh, but I don't know, like, 
I don't even know what that like. I don't actually know what the KB size is of the dependency tree of JS UnixFS exporter. Um, it may not be that bad. Maybe I'm you know making assumptions. Uh, so I I'm probably have to dig into it. It's certain, certainly larger than the rest of the Saturn JS code, but the rest of Saturn JS code doesn't do much. So, yeah, it doesn't use very very many libraries. Uh, Ollie, what what do you mean when you say like a block centric rather than UnixFS centric? API. Uh, with the APIs presenting entities that may be multi-block, and then we have to do some reaching around to get it back to be telling us each block it traversed or will provide. Okay. We just want block, 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 regardless of how many entities, hamps you may traverse through to decide that. So you mean like so so if, you, it, if you traverse a hamp, it's going to give you a hamp root, but not any of the intermediate nodes that it might have passed through to get to the next block in the path, for example. But Ali, can you just use the underlying block read function to know when a new block is being read? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what uh, we have workarounds right now that do that, but it's yeah, it's not not pretty. Yeah, this is like the eternal like we have the same. Same dilemma around selectors. Are we traversing nodes? Are we traversing blocks? Hard to know. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think we we definitely we've been staring at this problem for so long. Like we just need to separate out the traversal logics from any specifics. Um, so is this about if if I understand this is mean like it's not necessarily about say let's the the input, which is here's the path traversal I want, but about the output, which is I want you to give me the blocks that I went along the path here. And so having to do yeah. it in like a this way where I'm reading it, yeah. as, I'm getting the output as a side effect. Gonna, I want the output yeah, as, like a, exactly. as an I'm actual you, return parameter. Right now we give you yeah. like a jerry-rigged block store that tells us everything you did, but sure. the API should just tell us what it did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and to be able to, to do good, yeah, exactly. To do good trustless gateway traversal, like packing those blocks into the car, like the, the needs have changed from when the the surface area of the exporter was written. Yeah. Like it kind of made sense to hide that detail from users where they didn't need it, but now we absolutely need it. So we kind of have to rebuild it the other way around. That makes sense. I assume a lot of the guts probably don't need to be duplicated though, right? Because you're mostly just changing return parameters to like, return extra data that was being hidden before. <laughs> yeah, we could do it the less right way, sure. We'll probably just write every line of code from scratch and present it as a new thing. Maybe, yeah, I I, I, I guess uh, for actual UnixFS parsing traversal things, uh, I don't know, I, I think we've seen like four of them in Go and like they all kind of end up rewriting the same bugs, even with uh, tests in place. Um, this time will be different. This time will be different. This time I will write code with no bugs. Um, I don't know. When you figure out how to do that, let me know, because I haven't done that yet. Uh, I, I, I keep writing bugs. Um, That's the TED talk that I want to go to. Yeah. So I, I, I would... Yeah, I, I guess I would it, say around the verification stuff, not, I would try and write just saying code. That, yes. Anyway, what I'm telling you is this is happening. Yeah. It's very nice that you have feedback. Yeah. I, I would recommend using test fixtures as much as possible to validate. Which, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Dean. And if you have new ones, because I know like the Saturn folks, when they were writing some stuff, they yeah. came up with new ones. If Yeah. We're using, PRs, we're using the ones that Rod wrote. Yeah. Uh, okay. Great. Um, yeah. Those yeah. are good. We. Yeah. I should do it. Like I don't know how that never. Well, that was like one of those dangling items that just never quite made it back into them gateway conformance tests. But like, um, it would be nice to collect that because like yeah, Rod did. Rod wrote a whole bunch of those fixtures, and now we have two wonderful sets of fixtures. But there are two of them, and it's people probably only know about one at any given time. So, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll I think I'll ping him to go. Uh, I have no idea if Rod's still what he's doing or if he's still working here so, or working at PL. Sorry, uh, at PL Go. Uh, yeah. Okay, so do we have like uh, 
Do you have enough clarity I, I, around the state of the state of what currently exists such that sure. you know so what here, to here, use? Here's what I'm here's what I'm going what we're gonna do. We will complete our range request exploration uh and come back with a report that says it works. Um we would very much like to not be using this fork one way or another. That would be our biggest ask. So we'll submit that as a PR and people can determine uh, what they want to do with it. If you don't want to merge it, then we'll just wait for something that we think we can use in whatever form it manifests itself um, so we can get off the fork. Um, it might be the new, if there's a new DAG house, you know, take on transfer traversal at some point, maybe we'll look at that. Um, but that, like, as soon as we have range request support in our code, like the only remaining, like the biggest priority for us is not be running a fork of JS Unix FS. We don't care if we're running standard JS Unix FS. If you guys want to merge it, we'll we'll switch over right away. We don't, we, you know, we have no, like the API, yeah, maybe it's kludgy, but it works for us. So, um, uh, and so um, that's pretty much it for us. Uh, and then after that, like, I mean, we will, after that, it all moves down our priority list because there's some, because, you know, if it works in Saturn, then we definitely move on because <laughs> it's a very, we're, we're a pretty, uh, we got a lot of stuff to build. So, um, yeah, but we prefer not to be on a fork so I can remove the section of our documentation. It's like, what is this weird repo here? Um, so, yeah. Uh, other than that, yeah, like I said, I will, I will come back to this group we may find that there's something that doesn't work when we we have not done this round trip like from a browser to see what happens and you know then that's that's the, where the rubber hits the road but I, I think it might work I don't know yeah we'll see oh I guess that's the only item for today sorry uh, that's all I got. Do we have any sort of like uh, response comments? Uh, I'm not actually sure who maintains the JS um, IPFS Unix FS, the one that you're running the fork of. But like Adin, I really want to make sure that these efforts don't get fizzled out. Um, okay, yeah, Alex, cool. Yeah, all right. Awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna. Look, I'll try. I'll try to clean it up if if it's not like doesn't have a new test or anything, or is like a man a breaking change when it could be a parameter or something like that. Um, uh, so yeah, that, that, I, that I will do that. And then I don't know if you, when you guys get to it, like these two PRs that we're doing in our code, there's probably functions you're going to need like to do like, oh, I have an HTTP range header. How do I convert this to what we are going to use? Um, so I'll, I don't know. I'm not going to try to extract all that right now, but when, when the, that project, this is the web three, the Helia fetch project when that gets closer to being ready is that is that a is that a good description of yeah when that gets closer to being ready I'm happy to you know contribute this code into that repo or whatever so yeah, it looks like the code isn't really very far. very far right now so yeah cool um with that I was thinking of maybe we don't have any more topics for today. Um, I was thinking though, uh, maybe someone, sorry, Ben, to put you on the spot from ETH Limo. I was just thinking, maybe you want to share just a high level, first of all, congratulations. I know that you got some funding through the retroactive uh, public goods funding. Um, but I uh, also wanted to ask, maybe you want to share uh, just like a high level update of what you guys are working on and um anything that might be relevant to sort of DAP developers or users since you're already here? Yeah, no problem. Um, thank you for, yeah, the grant. That's a uh, really big help for us. Um, so uh, what we're working on kind of this quarter uh, is mostly kind of a transparent uh, infrastructure migration um, for the gateway infrastructure on the back end. Uh, we're moving um, away from kind of a, a proxy layer that we had written uh, to more of an API and kind of leveraging uh, an HTTP reverse proxy on the front end to uh, pass queries to that, get the name resolution, and then kind of handle all of the proxying there that will allow us to do uh, some multi-region setup. So we want a more performant user experience for everyone. Uh, and then currently, we've been kind of spending the last two weeks really troubleshooting issues with uh, IPNS resolution. That's been kind of a 
consistent complaint that we get from users like, hey, I update this name, I'm using Fleek or I'm using Filebase or some sort of other service to do this. And, you know, I see an update, but it's not consistently propagated across all of the nodes in our gateway. So we've been running through kind of a number of um, different troubleshooting steps to try to remedy that. Um, had some issues opened about it as a result, um, working with the Filebase team on that. They actually did have a problem in their implementation that we were able to help them get fixed. So hopefully we'll have that resolved um, pretty quickly uh, and then we can get back to this work. Um, but one of the things I am kind of interested in um, is this idea, because I have been speaking to Ed as well a little bit, um, kind of ad hoc offline about possibly running our own um, trustless version of ETH.limo for users that are interested in that. So that's probably something that we'll look at tackling um, probably Q2 sometime. Um, and I am also very interested. I learned about Rainbow uh, today from the, the shipyard team um, or last week, which seems pretty promising um, as kind of a HTTP spec gateway implementation. So we can maybe get away from Kubo. Um, still looks a little rough around the edges. So I'm not sure if it's um, necessarily ready for us to use yet. I would be very interested in speaking to somebody from the team to find out kind of their experience about it and um, some operational questions and um, yeah, you know, I was really kind of just uh, curious to join this because I am, uh, you know, I'm really glad to finally have some contacts with uh, the Protocol Labs team because we've been kind of in a, on an island and really kind of working through some of these, um, you know, problems on our own and, and just trying to rely on community support and that sort of thing. So I think this is really helpful for us. Um, and, you know, I do have some kind of longer questions that we can speak offline uh, relating to kind of like the IPFSO.io um, implementation and architecture. Um, you know, I'm curious to see how that compares to what we've been able to build and if there are some lessons that we could maybe, um, you know, learn from one another and how to kind of uh, mutually improve that. Yeah, I mean, one thing I will point out is that I actually got news of this today is that all of the backing infrastructure for IPFS.io is now running on Rainbow. And from what I've heard, Filebase is also heavily relying on uh, Rainbow, and they've actually seen quite um, a reduction in their sort of resource footprint. So um, great to hear uh, that, you know, you're working on improving some of your infra for this quarter. Um, I would love to also touch base on the whole IPNS topic. Around IPNS, I think the things that would be useful that is kind of like a bit of a black box is like a, maybe a bit more docs around some of the debugging uh, tools. I know that in Kubo CLI, we have some uh, better uh, uh, debugging um, commands that were recently introduced to do um, IPNS, but at least if users are able to sort of resolve records and then see what the different parameters are, especially if they're using... Uh, like a, a like a, a managed IPNS publisher like Filebase or um, I think Fleek does it too. I think these are the kinds of things that could help. Um, but I'll open it up. I'm sure that other folks have other ideas here. Yeah, I, I guess I, I have maybe I had a question on what what um what is it about the the sort of the, the trustless gateway setup that that is most interesting to you. Um, I ask this coming from the perspective that ETH.limo is mostly is dealing with things that are rooted in ENS addresses, right? And so the you you're you need you need to expose to users the first that first like hop that handles how do I uh, trust the <laughs> how do I get how do I get the ENS resolution done. Um, I know a lot of folks are using the Cloudflare resolver. Do you guys use a, do you guys use a different resolver? Would you be trying would you be, you know, interested in trying to push people to use something like yeah, Helios to, Helios uh, to do like uh, sort of light client resolution? Um, yeah, kind of what are, what are you guys thinking there? Yeah, so that's something that we're kind of working through internally. Um, we do have a Doe resolver that we run as well that should be pretty much feature complete with or compatible with um, Cloudflare's as well. I know we also support Arweave for that. Um, some users have built some like plugins and stuff like this that use that. Uh, so probably that I'm, I'm really kind of curious more about like how we can facilitate things that Ed is working on with these service workers to kind of install apps locally um, and do things uh, to kind of support that effort. That's something that comes up a quite frequently in the discussions that we have in terms of how we can mitigate 
and reduce some of the, the trust reliance uh, on our gateway, the service, the team, et cetera, uh, while also making it you know, still convenient for users to be able to resolve some of this content while there's kind of this nascent uh, you know, Web3 browsing experience um, out there. So I think it's really kind of a work in progress for us now. And we've been, you know, as we have the bandwidth to start a, uh, kind of putting together internal docs to figure that out. But I'm, I'm very open to suggestions and uh, you know, possible improvements that we can do to roll that out. Because I think the last time I looked on Dune Analytics, um, you know, ENS names, I think the majority of them, like 75, 80 percent uh, were a combination of IPNS or IPFS. Uh, and then kind of a very, very long tail of like Arweave or Swarm or some of these other more esoteric multi-hashes that are out there. So really want to kind of target that that audience uh, as much as possible, since that comprises the largest user base for us. Yeah, that's cool to hear. I think we we should definitely touch base and, and get into some of the details um, of this. I'd love to do that offline, and then maybe we can also bring some of those insights. I'd also love to look at that June query because um, I tried to uh, just quickly hack one together to get exactly that kind of uh, result, and I, I sort of got lost there a bit. Um, great. Um, Ed, it's good that you joined. Better late than never. Um... Yeah, hey, sorry, I had another meeting that overran massively. No worries, no worries. Is there anything you want to share before we wrap it up for today? Uh, just, uh, just to say that yeah, I've been like working on um trying to get this uh like this prototype out there into open source, but it's not quite there yet. I I did send it to you, Daniel. I don't know if I had a chance to look, but um. What I'm uh, basically where, where I left it was I was doing a bunch of um, like D like to resolve IPNS DNS. I was just using some like custom libraries, but I want to switch it to the actual Healy IPNS library now. I think is it Akin Brain has done some fixes that should have it working in a browser now. So um, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. Once I've done that, I think I'll just open source it, even though it's not ready, and just let people sort of hack around on it. Yeah, with regards to, so in browser IPNS resolution, I'm just curious if you spent much time thinking about uh, whether you, because when you're doing that in the browser, you basically have two options. You either start, you know, uh, traversing the DHT or you can, I mean, theoretically, you can also use PubSub, but now we sort of have this new approach, which is really fit for browsers, which is the delegated uh, routing endpoint which essentially supports uh, returning uh, the the raw IPNS records so that you can at locally. Um, and we're actually working on sort of a, a, a new sort of package for uh, Helia, which is, I mentioned this in the beginning, which is HTTP centric. So it'll use uh, a delegated routing endpoint that we run that is backed by this thing called some guy, but you can think of it as it's really running uh, the DHT and the network indexer, and uh, you can just ask it to do the DHT work for you over this delegated routing API. And the nice thing there is that it really makes the whole uh, process of resolving IPNS names quicker without sort of giving up any trust. Um, and so I'm, I'm actually working on an example that will showcase that. And in the next coming days, we should have something that's more easily usable for you. Yeah, that actually sounds great. Like that this currently just using like the example from uh, from the repo. So it's just the HT and PubSub with uh, DNS over HTTPS. Um, so switching to what you just described, the delegated routing approach uh, sounds really great. Yeah, happy to switch over to that once you've got an example I can reference. Good. Uh, and if we're already at that, uh, there's another point that I'd like to ask maybe a Dean and Lydell. Um, with the delegated routing, right? This is using some guy. I was curious, is there sort of a vision for a rainbow delegating all of its routing requests to um, a some guy instance? Oh. For like folks running gateway infrastructure, is that kind yeah. of like a... Yeah, I, I think like it's a natural progression, especially like for a public gateways, um, you got a very popular um cids 
uh, and content paths, and there's a long tail, and you don't want to spend majority of time constantly resolving the same things over and over. So the latest, the, the some guy that runs on delegated uh, IPFS.dev uh, already has a semi-smart cache control in place. So you only do the work once a minute if there's a successful result. Uh, so you can think like, okay, all the requests that go to the uh, public gateway, they affect, uh, if, the, if, that, if that public gateway is one of many points of presence, right? You hit one of multiple points of presence close to you. Um, effectively, each one would be doing the same work if each one runs the routing. But if you if we are able to leverage the fact that we already have this delegated routing endpoint, uh, it already has a pre-warmed results for popular content, uh, which gives a breeding room for less uh, popular content. Uh, by the fact that we would be leveraging that first, of course, we would be, we want to have a fallback, right? We don't want to uh, have a denial of service if that single endpoint goes offline, but it's a performance optimization in my mind uh, on our like uh, progression path. Uh, so yeah, I think we would do that. We would, uh, uh, that way it would help in both directions. So for example, the, the gateway request should be faster because they hit the cached results for the popular content. And also if you don't use public gateway, but you only use delegated routing, those results as well may be faster for you because the gateway users pre-warmed the popular content. Uh, those are like my uh, initial intuitions. Uh, TBD, how it looks like for IPFS IO, but I think for sure we would want to have capability in Rainbow to shut down or like delegate first. I don't know how, what. I yeah. Mean, so we, yeah. yeah. So the the capability to delegate to something else to do the routing is is already there. Um, I think it's sort of a, it's a matter of like how microservices you want to go, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you want more microservices if it benefits you and if you actually need to like separately scale them, right? Uh, you, you want less of them if like that doesn't bother you and running multiple binaries and handling that is a pain. Um, so at the moment, they're, they're all just sort of running, it, you know, everything has its own routing system built into it. But, you know, if you decided you were like, actually, we're going to microservice this per region, right? We're going to have one delegated router system or a couple of them per region, right? That sounds sane. If you're like, this doesn't buy me enough, also fine. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I think that's, you know, and and because once you start microservicing, you also have to start worrying about things like, if I was resource constrained, would I want to allocate my routing requests towards users that are asking me for routing requests or towards gateways that are asking me for routing yeah. requests? Like, like right. there's just microservices bring more complexity by separating the processes out. And so you do it once the scale makes sense for you to do it. Um, or if you start doing like, you know, fancier things, right? Um, the good news is of course you could, if you had sort of fancy things you were including in your separate routing binary, you could just include that code inside of the process that was running, you know, inside of the running process and bundle them together. Um, I think we'll sort of see how it goes. Uh, one of the nice things with sort of the the rainbow setup is, uh, it's a gateway. Nothing, everything is ephemeral, right? And so, sort of iterating is easier because it doesn't come with the cost of data migration, right? You can just blow everything up and start again, and see like what works better than it did last time. Right. Okay. I think that's a good note um, for us to end on. That was quite insightful. I'm glad we got that into the recording because that was something that I was wondering just how you guys are thinking about it. So it's useful to have that. Um, the, I guess the main reason I asked that was because I imagine at some point to see more delegated route public sort of good delegated routing endpoints, just the same way that we have gateways. 
and the resource footprint for that is much lower than it would be to do uh, to run a whole gateway, right? So it's like I think I think that that that's kind of like a net win, while being also less uh, uh, less like costly to provide as a public good. Okay. Um, thanks everyone Super for joining. Yeah, go on. <laughs> the delegated routing, is that actually in Kubo or like nodes that are running now, or is this like a separate thing that's not yet integrated? Yeah. Kubo so, so, supports it. Kubo okay. supports it in, in both directions. It both will ex it both sort of you can turn on exporting the delegated routing API and you can uh, it can internally make use of del the, the route delegated routing API. Nice. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's sort of in, in both directions is, is supported. All right. Um, that brings us to an end. Thanks everyone for joining. See you at the next session.